Our worship service this morning is Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184. We stand for open hymn 442. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, <clears throat> I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. 
but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, by virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, who I trust, let me not be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh, my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let us pray. <clears throat> Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament reading for the first Sunday in Advent is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them. Then they shall dwell in their own land. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 13. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, 
you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or s and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of our Lord. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Coming this morning to Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church. Welcome our visitors and guests. Please remember to fill out the fellowship heads, end of your pews, and pass them inwardly. It's how we get to know who's worshiping with us this morning. A bunch of announcements. Uh, this evening is the German Village Caroling. You can read more about that in your bulletin. This coming Saturday is our Christmas Caroling to the shut-ins. Uh, this year we only have two. Um, the other shut-in is in Florida with her family uh, for this period of time. So if you're uh, wanting to uh, go caroling to the shut-ins, please. I'll have the secretary send out an email again. The only reason we need to know a number for that is because one of the families provides uh, snacks for everybody, and they just want to know approximately how many people to have uh, stuff for. Um, next week is a voters' meeting. 
I'm supposed to announce that according to the Constitution, so that'll be between services. And the only, oh, uh, another announcement is uh, today is uh, the Our Savior in Chillicothe Sunday, in which we're encouraging people to go uh, worship with them uh, this, this week at their 1030 service. So I know a lot of you that are here this morning are heading there right after church. So we'll be praying for that in our prayers, um, that our evangelism efforts uh, may bear fruit. Um, and finally, this is just a public service announcement, but the donkey and the cow are very appealing to little kids. They're at the perfect height where they want to ride them. And I know this first Sunday in Advent is the one where everyone just gets very excited that the Christmas decorations are up. So just mind your kids after church. Uh, they're going to want to come up and ride them. I'm just speaking as a dad who's seen it happen. <coughs> um, that's it for announcements. We will continue now with the hymn of the day, 332. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today is the Palm Sunday account from Matthew 21, with particular focus on verse 9. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him 
We're shouting Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So far, the word of the Lord. Happy New Year's, brothers and sisters in Christ. As we are now in the new church year, so we have a renewed emphasis on the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. The theme for today is triumphal entry, triumphal mission. As Jesus triumphantly entered the holy city of Jerusalem, so also we triumphantly enter the mission field every time we leave church, having been equipped with the word of God to serve our neighbor not only with our good works, but also in truth. They need the saving gospel just as much as we do. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, that final time, as well as our entry into the mission field on a daily basis, have several similarities. First, in hindsight, it's hard for us to see the joy of the crowds on that day Jesus was riding a donkey because we know how that Holy Week ended. They crucified our Christ. Yet Jesus' suffering and crucifixion, his obedience to the Father, even to the point of death, are his kingly glory. In a similar way, it might be hard for us to see the joy in going out into the world after we leave church when our evangelizing efforts often seem to be mostly in vain. We may even encounter persecution and suffering for it. Yet that is our glory, because we are imitating our Savior. Jesus' triumphal entry is triumphant, because though he entered the city to die for the sins of the world, he would have the final victory. Jesus would rise again from the dead. His body that was beaten, scourged, and punctured with nails and a spear, would live again just three days later, raised imperishable. That's what makes your exit from these doors each week a triumphal mission. You are not soldiers who go into battle hoping and praying for victory, yet unsure of the outcome. You do know how the story ends. You are proclaiming an eternal gospel that is and has certain victory in Christ Jesus. Even if your neighbors or loved ones despise and scorn your loving works towards them, that includes telling them about all Jesus has done for you both, the mission remains triumphant. Christ is living. While he lives, he continually sends the Holy Spirit through his word to bestow faith. We simply do not know how the word of God is working in hearts despite how a person receives it as we are speaking it. Most of the time, when we speak God's word to someone, particularly when it may convict their heart of sin, it will not immediately be well received. It is the rarest of circumstances that someone, upon feeling the threat of the law, joyfully responds, thank you so much for making me feel that way. Now I'm ready to repent and then believe the good news that Jesus died for me. We are stubborn mules. Most likely, the person will feel upset and attacked and may make a passing reply just to end the conversation. Don't despair especially if this happens with your grown-up children. You'd probably have the same initial response if you were in their shoes. Commend them to God. Let the Holy Spirit do his wonderful work and be patient. The truth of God's word will settle in over time and, Lord willing, the fruits of repentance and faith will be born, if not in your lifetime, in theirs. Whether it is received or not, the mission remains triumphant because as we say throughout the whole Easter season, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. 
another similarity between Jesus' triumphal entry into the holy city and our triumphal mission is the regal imagery. Jesus riding on a donkey was the new Solomon, fulfilling what Solomon had done centuries before when he rode the same beast of burden shortly before being anointed king. Solomon, of course, was the biological son of David. Jesus was so much more son of David and yet also son of God. Jesus would be anointed king when the crown of thorns was placed on his head. Remember, Jesus' crucifixion is his glory. The way our triumphal mission is regal is in accord with what Paul says in the epistle. He says, the night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. The day of the Lord is at hand. It's coming soon. That's what Advent is all about. We are waiting for Christ's return. The armor of light is the battle wear of the Christian. We are clothed in Christ, our King, the light of the world. For as many as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Christ is our shield and our weapon. We sang those words on Reformation Sunday, didn't we? A mighty fortress is our God, a trusty shield and weapon. He is our defense and that which leads us on the offensive. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart, Hebrews 4. Wear the armor of light, dear saints. Wear it in your minds, in your hearts, and on your lips. Finally, the third similarity between Jesus' triumphal entry and our triumphal mission is the words of Matthew that connect us to the first Palm Sunday account, which is also the verse with which I began the sermon. Verse 9, And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. While Matthew paints a literal image of the crowds progressing through the streets with people in front of Jesus and also trailing behind him. It also depicts a much broader picture of the church. Those who shouted Hosanna before him were those in the Old Testament who preceded Jesus' first coming. Those who lived before the Son of God became flesh, believed in the Messiah who was to come and longed to see that day in Jerusalem. Those who followed after him are us, includes us and those not even yet born. Hosanna means save us. And the one who believes in Jesus, in the Messiah, in the Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, sings every Sunday in the liturgy. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Right before we eat his body and drink his blood for the forgiveness of sins. Je just as Jesus came to the holy city on that triumphal day, so also he comes to us in the name of the Lord every time two or more are gathered in his name. As baptized Christians, you bear his name. And of all days, on this first Sunday in Advent, we have the chance to bear this name as many of our people head to our Savior in Chillicothe this morning. Christ comes to us in word and sacrament. As Christians, we have the chance to bear his name and bring Christ to others through the same word. When we speak that holy, blessed word to others, we are giving them Jesus. We don't know what fruit the Lord will bear with our works, but we commend it all to him and let him do what he does best. 
That's the Latin name for this Sunday. Ad te lavabi. To you I lift up. We lift up our souls to the Lord. We lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ to the Lord. We lift up our neighbors who don't yet know him. It's a triumphal mission because of Christ's triumphant entry. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Lord, save us. That's what he went to Jerusalem to do on the cross. And that's what he continues to come and do through his word and sacraments, which point us to the cross. Triumphal entry, triumphal mission. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that by patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord our God, in holy baptism you have called us to be Christians and granted us the remission of sins. Make us ready to receive the most holy body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all of our sins. And grant us grateful hearts that we may give thanks to you. O Father, to your Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, your word does not go out in vain. 
Please be with those who travel down to our Savior for a safe passage, but also that our evangelism efforts may bear fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common supplications for the well-being of your church throughout the world. So guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit, that all who profess themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Send down upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may please you in all things. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation, that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, and help those who call upon you in any need, that they may have patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, be released from their afflictions. Especially Dean, Steve, Lois, and Brandon. Through Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue with the service of the sacrament, I just wanted to remind you of the newsletter article this past month, which was an encouragement to examine yourself before receiving the sacraments. So there will be a short pause before, after we sing the Agnew Stay, before we sing the distribution hymn. The congregation is encouraged to go through the Christian questions with their answers on page 329 in your hymnal. And then we will continue with the distri distribution hymns. We continue now with the service of the sacraments on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, 
he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.